Okay, so now we're going now we're going to work on our worms, and so the first one we're going to talk about are our nematodes. And so we're going to talk about Enterobus molecularis, which is known as pinworm. Um, we also are going to talk about Nicotara americanus and Ankylostoma duodenal, which are our hookworms. And we're also going to talk about whipworms, roundworms, threadworms, etc. So our intestinal nematodes are all listed here. So we have Enterobus funicularis um, and our Tricaris tricara, which are both going to have ingestion of eggs. Um, and so these are different than the other ones, which are going to have penetration of larva. So in this case, we're going to have um, Ascaris lumbricoides, Nectar americanus, and Ancelotoma duodenal and Strongyloides um, are all going to have larva penetration of the skin. Migration of the lungs is going to not occur when you have ingestion of the eggs because you're going to simply take the eggs and swallow them. They're going to get into the intestine and then they're going to be able to be infectious. All of our uh, nematodes that have to enter through penetration migrate to the lungs because from the lungs you will swallow them and then they will get into um, your intestine where they want to be. So with respect to diagnosis, there's a few things that are um, unique to some of these. Enterobus funicularis is going to have eggs in the anal folds, so you don't actually shed the eggs in the stool, and they're very sticky, and so you have to use a tape to actually get off them off. Tricaris tricara, Ascaris lumbricoides, Nicotar americanus, and en Ankylo Toma duodenal are all going to be eggs in the stool. And then Strongyloides has larva in the stool. Most of them have the same sort of primary treatment. Ivernectin is going to be a little bit different for Strongyloides. All right, so first let's talk about Enterobus vomicularis. This is going to have humans as the only host, so human to human transmission, fecal oral, is how this guy gets around. You're going to have again those eggs on the perianal folds and you're going to have to use tape to get them off and to look at them under the microscope. These are going to be very itchy, so fecal oral route of infections common to, for children to get these and to reinfect themselves over and over. Um, you're going to have ingestion of the egg, Oops. and then you're going to have um, the eggs hatch in the small intesta, intestine, sorry, and the larva will move to the large intestine. Now, in the large intestine, it's going to take about two to four weeks for the adults to emerge. And then the adults are going to emerge. The females will migrate to the anus and discharge their eggs. The eggs are going to develop into an infectious form within four to six hours of discharge. Again, there's going to be primarily in children, long-term care facilities, and these are very, very infectious. The clinical disease is going to be irritation of the anal fold. And this is going to occur during the migration of the adult um, as it moves into that area where it can deposit the eggs. And so you're going to lead to night itching, loss of sleep associated with this. Diagnosis is going to be eggs or worms on the anus sticky tape. The eggs are never found in the stool because they're too sticky. You're going to have treatments, um, which is going to be a diazole treatment. And in this case, because it's so contagious, it's kind of like lice, you have to um, treat the entire household. Now next we have our hookworms, Nectar americanus and um, Ankylostoma duodenal. These are going to be worldwide. Um, North America has a limited distribution and that's because of improved hygiene. So this used to be very common in farm children. They would run around the soil and they would get this. And so one way to prevent this was to make farm children wear shoes. And so that pretty much made Nicotara americanus um, go away in the United States. This is going to be in soil contaminated with human feces, so another human-human transmission. And humans are the only host for these um, hookworms. So the hookworms are going to have what's called a filariform larva. 
and this is going to penetrate exposed skin so it actually burrows its way into your body. Once it gets in the body it's going to migrate in the blood to the lungs and then it's going to penetrate your alveoli and then it's going to get into the pharynx and be swallowed and it really wants to be swallowed because it wants to get into your small intestine. In the small intestine the larva will develop into the worm this will attach the intestine and just simply produce eggs. And in this case, the eggs are going to be passed in the stool. So finding eggs in the stool are going to be diagnostic. Now, once it gets in the soil, it's going to be an immature or rhabditive form. And then it's going to mature into an infectious form within about two weeks. Now, this is mostly going to have asymptomatic. Migration of the larva into the lungs can be irritation. Um, you can have coughs, and because it's a um, parasite, it can lead to eosinophilia. You also are going to produce some symptoms of nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea when you are um, when the worms are infecting your small intestine, and this can also lead to anemia because the worms are basically feeding and um, taking your nutrition. So you can have vitamin B deficiencies, folic acid deficiencies, etc. Diagnosis is detection of eggs in the stool, and of course, prevention, good personal hygiene. 